What if, just for fun, you were checking bargain airfares one morning and suddenly you came upon a blazing hot fare to Vietnam? Would you snap it up? How long would you go for? What would you do there? How much should you plan on the trip costing? Well, that's just exactly what happened to us. Hi, we're Jay and Tanya, a retired couple who almost constantly travel the world looking for adventure, fun, and the sometimes absurd. It happened one morning about five months ago. As Tanya and I were having our morning coffee, I was checking out bargain airfares to, well, anywhere, and wow, did I find a good one. Oh, by the way, that's not really Tanya and me, but uh, it's a very good looking couple, so I thought that would be a fun picture. We found a great airfare. Round trip New York to Ho Chi Minh City, premium economy on Singapore Airlines for $1,338 each. Tanya and I looked at each other and she said, let's go. So we booked it right away for a three week trip in October. Now our home airport Knoxville is not necessarily a global air hub. So we had to find a trip then from flight from uh, Knoxville to JFK that coincided with the segments on Singapore Airlines. That uh, trip cost us, that segment will cost us $552 each. So that blazing hot fare of uh, $1,338 each ended up being about uh, $1,890 each for a total of $3,780 total. So that's not exactly a blazing hot fare then at that point, but you know, for premium economy, most of the way, uh, to Asia round trip, that's not too bad. It's pretty good. But the real attraction of this trip was that we would be able to fly on the longest nonstop flight in the world, 19 hours from JFK to Singapore. A lot of people would say and have said, ugh, why would you do that? And I, you know, the answer, of course, is, well, we wanted to do that flight or something very similar to it, but this is perfect. It is the longest. Uh, there's some uh, arguments about what might be the real longest flight, but this is recognized as the longest nonstop flight in the world. And Tanya has always regretted not being able to fly on the Concorde while it was still flying. So I'm trying to make up for it in some way. Uh, I don't know if she agrees with this, but it, at least if it's not on the Concorde and very fast, at least this trip will be nice and long. So about 19 hours long. So we'll see uh, if I can make up for her uh, uh, lack of a Concorde flight. So total time from takeoff in Knoxville to landing in Ho Chi Minh City will be about 35 hours. So it'll be one of the longest trips uh, that we've done in quite a while in terms of, uh, of flights, but it'll be fun. So we leave uh, in another five or six days and uh, the Singapore Airlines flight will be on an Airbus A350-900 ULR. The ULR stands for Ultra Long Range. And Singapore Airlines has seven of these aircraft and they can fly up to 9,700 nautical miles for over 20 hours nonstop. Our flight will be approximately 9,000 nautical miles or about 10,350 miles. The Singapore plane has no economy seats because it uses the weight those economy passengers would take up uh, for, to allow for weight for additional fuel uh, that it needs for this long nonstop flight. It has only business class and premium economy seats. So 67 seats are business class and, six, and 94 are premium economy. So we'll be taking premium economy and from the videos that we've seen, it looks like uh, the whole experience will be pretty cool. So now let's get back to our Vietnam trip itself. One of our most memorable trips was ever was to Vietnam 28 years ago. In 1994, we met a couple of cyclists from a couple of guys from Berkeley who were putting together a, a trip through Vietnam. And there were about eight of us that joined them for a three-week bicycle trip from Saigon uh, up to 
uh, Hue, and then we went on up to Hanoi after that. Uh, there were eight of us, and uh, Vietnam was still pretty undeveloped at that point in 94. And so our trip was pretty basic. And sometimes we weren't even sure where we were going to go. We knew the town we were going to go to, but we didn't know where we'd stay. So, you know, we, we said, oh, where are we going today? Well, we're going up to play coup. And uh, then we're going to bend me to it. Well, we're, you, know, you know where we're going to stay tonight? No, nope, never been there. Okay. And we'd ride our bikes through the central highlands and we just had a, had a ducky time. But uh, it still, even though it was basic, uh, it was... What actually was one of the best trips of our life. And so uh, uh, this is sort of a return to Vietnam. Now we don't expect it'll be anything like it was once. And uh, so for what for this trip, we're not trying to relive those kind of memories. What we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna, uh, we've put together a, a trip that is a little more comfortable, probably a lot more comfortable than uh, physically than the one we took before. But in any case, it's a beautiful country and we look forward to going back there. So in putting together our plan, uh, Vietnam, as you may know, is a very long country. And so you can, when you're planning a trip, you can either fly into Hanoi or to Saigon, Ho Chi Minh City, and, uh, and then go either you know, north or south, respectively. So this time, we are, our round trip is from Ho Chi Minh City. So uh, we, when we, after we fly into there, then we are traveling north. <clears throat> we end up in Hanoi. Then we're going over to Phu Quoc Island, uh, which is a place we've never been before and spend some nights there, then back to Ho Chi, Ho Chi Minh City and then back to Knoxville. So it'll be about uh, 21 days altogether. And uh, here's kind of how we've broken it down. Ho Chi Minh City, we're going to stay four nights. Then we're going up to Da Nang. We'll spend two nights there. Uh, then, uh, excuse me, we're going to Nha Trang first, and then for two nights, and then we go to Da Nang for two nights. And then we're going to be in... Uh, Hoi An for uh, three nights, which is a wonderful uh, place. And we have very fond memories of that because we had our second wedding anniversary there. We have number 30 coming up this year. Um, then we're going to take a, uh, a trip on Ha Long Bay. Um, probably be a little, I know it will be much fancier than uh, the last time we went. Last time we went was just uh, with a guy on a, uh, a little boat. And he took us out there. And uh, I mean, there weren't now from the pictures I've seen, there are all these you know, kind of luxury cruise junk type uh, ships and the place is just full of all kinds of uh, travelers going out there. And I'm, so I'm sure it'll be much different, but um, it'll still be memorable and fun. <clears throat> then uh, back to Hanoi for one night, then we're going over to Phu Cook Island for four nights and then back to Saigon and then, and then back. I keep calling it Saigon, but you know, it's either way, Ho Chi Minh City, Saigon. Now, there are a lot of other places you can visit in Vietnam, but for this trip, uh, we've been to some of them before, the ones you know we were at in 1994, and so we're skipping them this time. Uh, it was a real uh, dilemma, should we go back to Dalat, which is a, a very beautiful place. Uh, it, we're just, I think maybe we had such a good time there and it was so pretty and, and uh, I hate to use the word unspoiled, but that's, kind of what it was. Uh, and I have the impression now that it's much more popular with lots and lots of people that I just as soon not see it that way. Um, maybe another time. Um, Hue has its Imperial Citadel and uh, that was a great experience. We'll just leave that uh, uh, to, to nice memories. Uh, play Ku and Bemi to it. Again, we'll leave that to uh, um, the way we enjoyed them once before. Uh, and then there's Sapa in the north, uh, which we debated, but we're not going to go there. Uh, but it is beautiful. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of different YouTube videos that you can watch and decide whether uh, Sapa is an area that you want to go to. Um, and we're not, also, we're not going down into the Mekong Delta. Uh, not for any reason, but it's just... Uh, it, it just didn't fit into this overall plan. In one of our uh, other videos, we talked about... Um, uh, budgeting for travel in retirement and understanding what kind of a traveler you are, whether you're budget, mid-range, or luxury. And we tend to usually be in the mid-range category, uh, but a place like Vietnam, which is, uh, while not dirt cheap, is certainly in the on the lower end of the cost spectrum. Uh, you can, uh, for the same price that you would pay uh, for a mid-range accommodation uh, in a, a more uh, 
uh, in a Western country, you can you can splurge for a luxury in uh, in Vietnam. So we, we're we're putting together kind of a mix of uh, of mid and luxury, and a few uh, budget ones, but not budget to the category of um, you know the, the bathroom being a a hole in the concrete and a hose being your shower, which was kind of the situation we had uh, on our first trip. Oh. Uh, that's our upcoming trip. We're going to leave in a few days. Please tune in to our upcoming videos and see exactly how we handle uh, taking an ind tri independent trip to Vietnam and how you can easily do this too. I want to do this. I'm going to do this every every little step of the way, which for a lot of you will be, oh man, this is so basic. But uh, I'm doing this for people that may not, who may be a little apprehensive about uh, uh, um, traveling somewhere or in Southeast Asia and uh, and make them feel a bit more comfortable about how easy it is. Okay, see you later.